you know, when they decided to add an actual Democrat in Star Trek, I thought that they jumped the shark. There's nothing more interesting that they can do after that, unless they hold the presidential debates within Star Trek itself. But boy, was I wrong. That was another level, which apparently they have managed to achieve in Picard. Watch the following clip. Our conflict also started with a fight for freedoms. We called it the Second Civil War. So, in an expose about humanity's worst moments, we get to see some of the most American-centric, modern take that is humanly possible. Quite insulting if you had the time machine, by the way. I mean, calling it Civil War Number 2. Imagine the first American Civil War where you had armies on both sides and it was such a traumatic event that it left a big scar in American history. I mean, from a European perspective, I would say it registers on a six to seven. Uh, I mean, compared it to the invasion of the Mongols in Europe, you know, like it, it, it can be worse is what I'm saying. Like humanity has experienced far worse than the American Civil War, which is bad in itself, but not, not the worst. It's not World War I level. But to compare that with, like, how, how many people died on the capital? Like, what, what is the death count? Like, how many cities were raised? Well, who are the generals on both sides? You know, it, it's a little bit insulting, I would say. Like, you need to be from California yeah, to make that statement, uh, which is kind of a good thing, I guess. Because it shows how uneducated in history the writers of the show are, how American-centric they are. And I don't know. You know like When I used to watch the previous Star Treks, I didn't get any of that. Uh, people say, well, Star Trek was always political, and it was, but it was enjoyed both by the left and the right. I mean, it was even enjoyed by people outside of the United States, like people who didn't get any of the U.S. context. And it wasn't preachy. I think that was the most important aspect. Like, it didn't really tell you, like, this is the correct way of thinking. And if you don't think like this, then you're a bad person. And, and let's talk about events that happened last year. And pretend they have, like, major historical significance that are going to be remembered thousands of years into the future. You know, like, at the end of the day, I, I, I think I know the reason why so many people don't like the new Star Trek. Why they don't like Picard, why they don't like Discovery. It has to do with the original shows trying to portray a golden era for humanity. They try to imagine what would be the best future for mankind. And, and they succeeded in predicting very accurately some of the technological advancements that we have now. Like, for example... The tablet is, is a technological advancement that was predicted in Star Trek. Uh, the communicator without any wires that existed in Star Trek. And many, many others, right? So when it comes to technology, they predicted so much. And if you look at Picard and Discovery, they don't even attempt at predicting some future technology that we may use. Um, all they're doing is like, oh yeah, well, they have holograms and other stuff. But like that, that was in the previous Star Treks as well. Like they're not trying to think like, okay, maybe some chips that can augment the brain or some implants that may help people who can't walk. You know, like something like that. I don't know, but like something. They don't even try to do that. I mean, there's an episode where they go into a kitchen and it looks just like a modern kitchen. It's got an induction stove and, and everything. And it doesn't even make sense considering that in Star Trek there's replicators. But they don't care. And then it's not just the technology. But like they also try to think like how people will behave in the future. So if you look at the first Star Trek. Uh, people in the future do not curse. They, they don't have potty mouths. Um, people in the future are fit. They do not suffer from any illness. In fact, there's an entire episode where Picard has a headache and the doctor on the ship is incredibly concerned because they say, well, that's not something we get anymore. Like people used to have headaches, but they don't now. So massive advancements in medicine, massive advancements in um, 
people being fulfilled and, and managing to get everything they can from life. And then it's also about the way of thinking. Like there's an episode where they bring Abraham Lincoln from the past. And the first thing that Abraham Lincoln does is he calls one of the black ladies from the ship, calls her the N-word. And he does, immediately he realizes that it's offensive. He apologizes and the lady goes like, well, I didn't even know like you were insulting me because we're past racism. Like we're so past that, that it didn't even register to me that you are being insulting. That's a, an episode from the original Star Trek. And it shows that the writers were trying to show a positive aspect for humanity. Uh, but when you look at Picard and the next generation, they just try to talk about modern conflicts through the lens of the left. I mean, they're not even pretending, okay? When you bring a Democrat, like a, when, when you bring an actual Democrat on the set and they're the president of Earth, like, get the fuck out. You know, it, it, it's so blatant that, and, and you're not even like trying to pretend that you're neutral in order to consider that right-wingers may perhaps be your audience. Like, you're not even trying to um, create a show that both people from the left and the right would enjoy, which is what the original Star Trek was. I mean, it, it didn't even matter the politics that you have. It was like, okay, it's, it's a show that's cool and people would watch it. So I wouldn't even know about this. Um, was it for not you guys, which sent it to me on Twitter, because believe it or not, like, no one is watching Star Trek now. I mean, it's it's so badly written. I mean, it's not even the politics, you know? The politics are just, like, immersion-breaking. Like, it, it reminds you, by the way, you're not watching an actual TV show that, that's supposed to put you in a universe. No, no, no. It, it's all about the writers and their politics and their agenda, and they're trying to filter out the good people from the bad. So if you get upset about this, stop watching, because they don't want you. But but it's not even that. It's like the story doesn't make sense. The original lore is inconsistent. They they really don't care about anything. I mean, again, in the original lore, in the future, people do not curse. In Picard, everyone has a potty mouth. In the original, people do not smoke. And they do here. People don't do drugs in the, in, in the original. And they do here. Like, just so many things that, that don't make any sense from a lore perspective. Because they don't care about the Lord. They really, like, like all, all it is for them is a husk. Like, they, all they want is the IP, the name, to do the bait and switch, to attract people, make them think that they're going to see Star Trek. But in reality, they're, they're going to see something that's... I, I wouldn't even call it fan fiction at this point. I mean, Mary Sue, the, the original Mary Sue, the story where all of a sudden you have this incredibly talented self-insert aboard the Enterprise... And she is so good that she outmaneuvers all of the cast and whatnot. That was a better story than what they're doing to Picard right now. And that's a better story what they're doing to Discovery right now. Let that sink in. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to my live stream channel, please. I do have one. And uh, there's also a link to that in the pinned comment.